Hey folks, this is Kalani. Gearing up in World of Warcraft has never been easier, or more varied for open world or solo content players. There are so many options for how to gear up, and you can get a much higher item level when compared to previous seasons or expansions, all without having to jump into difficult end game group content. Some of these gear sources are brand new for season 4, and some of the progression isn't immediately obvious, so a lot of folks do skip over some of it. So we're going to go through every gearing option you have as a solo content focused player and show you how you can get up to item level 515 all by yourself. Now before we jump in be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. Season 4 has more gearing options available to everyone than almost any other time in Dragonflight, so you're kinda spoilt for choice right now, and you can get a very high item level without doing anything too difficult. Our first goal here is gonna get above item level 480. Any Awakened World content will reward you with about item level 480 gear on the veteran track. There are about 3 events per Awakened cycle, so if you get them all done you'll have quite a few chances per week to get some loot. All of this content is also going to reward you with a cache you can open for even more item level 480 gear, so you get 2 chances per event you do to get some sweet upgrades. Now the easiest way to see what is awakened in any given week is to head on over to Valdragon and pick up the last Hurrah weekly quest. To complete the quest you need to take part in the Awakened World content, so it points you to exactly what you can do to get this easy 480 gear. The weekly quest is also going to reward you with a box of goodies which includes an item level 493 piece of gear, and it's one of the only ways to get your Sparks of Awakening, so you want to get that done every week as well. And then you can also kill the Awakened World boss every week too, this also rotates with the other Awakened content and they can drop item level 499 gear which can give you some big upgrades, but you'll get another cash from the world boss as well so you are always guaranteed to get at least something from the world bosses. It's also worth noting that pretty much all of this gear can be used in the Revival Catalyst, so you can use it to unlock your powerful 2 set and 4 set bonuses for Season 4. You'll get 1 charge per week here, so everyone has 2 charges right now, and then we'll just keep getting more charges as the weeks roll by. Don't forget about your set bonuses, they provide some huge power spikes for your character, even if it doesn't increase your item level any further. Now if you run out of weekly content to do but you still want to farm some gear, I would encourage you to hop into heroic dungeon queues. I know dungeons aren't technically solo content, but all you have to do is queue up, there's no actual group making or building, so you queue up, blast through the dungeon, and you can get some item level 476 gear very easily. Heroic dungeons are supposed to be harder when compared to previous seasons, but they are still incredibly easy. You shouldn't have any problems clearing through the dungeons, and it is a very easy source of decent gear which is infinitely repeatable. There are no lockouts on your heroic dungeoning, so you can really go ham if you want to. As with every other season, all of this gear is also upgradable, all of that 480 veteran gear can be upgraded all the way to 502, giving you plenty of item level growth to get your gearing adventures underway. To get up to that 502 item level mark we're going to need some crests. Whelpling crests will take you part of the way and then we're going to need drake crests after that. One of the easiest ways to get whelp crests is to just fly around the dream surge zone and collect green orbs. So find the zone with the dream surge icon on your dragon isles map, pop on over, take to the skies and look for some green orbs. They're usually hanging out in high up areas or in towers under bridges, the kinds of places that will be fun to dragon ride around and through. Each orb you collect will give you two crests. Another easy way to get Whelpling Crests is by running Heroic Dungeons. Each Heroic Dungeon you complete will yield 10 Whelpling Crests, so if you hop into Heroic Dungeons for the Vault credit for easy gear, you'll also be getting Whelpling Crests, so that's handy. You'll also get quite a lot of them if you decide to hop into LFR to get some quick boss kills. 10 Crests per boss you kill, so that's an incredibly efficient source of Crests as well, but we'll talk more about LFR later. Drake Crests are kinda easier to get your hands on because they're rewarded alongside all of the weekly open world content. The weekly Last Hurrah quest rewards you with Drake Crests, most of the Awakened World content that is required to complete the weekly quest also rewards you with Drake Crests, and then the cash that you get alongside all of those events also contains Drake Crests, so you kinda don't really have to try to get Drake Crests in Season 4, you can cap your weekly earnings without too much effort. If you do need a few extra, Drake Crests also come from the Raid on Normal as well as Mythic Zero Dungeons, but those activities aren't really within the scope of this video. With Whelpling and Drake Crests you can easily upgrade anything you get up to 502, so that's going to be really nice. 
Another option you have for very easy gearing options early on is to use Whelpling Crests to craft item level 486 gear. You heard me right, 486 gear and all you need are a handful of Whelpling Crests. This crafted gear is perfect for filling in your gaps early on to help you beef up that item level. All you need to do is buy a nascent Whelpling Crest from an enchanting supplies vendor. That'll set you back 30 Whelpling Crests, which means that for every 30 Whelpling Crests you have, you can turn them into a piece of 486 gear. Head on over to the Crafting Order Clerks, search for Enchanted Whelpling Crest, and collect all of the mats to put one together. If you're an enchanter with a recipe, you can do this part yourself easy peasy. If you're not an enchanter, just set the crafting order and wait for someone to finish it. Then you're going to want to create a crafting order for the blue recipes for whatever gear slot you want to fill, and this can be almost any slot. This gear will get replaced pretty quickly, so I would mostly just use it to fill in your lowest item level slots. Grab the materials, plug in your enchanted whelpling crest, and you can get up to item level 486 as long as you get a rank 5 craft. That is insane for how easy and plentiful whelpling crests are, and eventually you'll get a high enough item level where you don't even want to use them for upgrades anymore, so this is a fantastic way to get very easy 486 gear using your leftover whelpling crests. Crafted gear can take you much further though, you can get up to item level 515 just from using crafting and crafted gear. There is a hefty time gate on this process though, because you're going to need a spark of awakening. There's only one way to get this spark, by collecting splintered sparks from the last Hurrah weekly quest that we talked about earlier. Get that weekly done every week and you'll be on track to create one spark of awakening every two weeks, which means one new piece of crafted gear every two weeks as well. If at any point you forget to complete your weekly and you miss a splintered spark, don't worry, you can pick up those missed sparks through other types of content, like LFR, which we'll talk about in just a moment, so you can always catch back up to everyone else. Combine your two splinters into a Spark of Awakening, and then we can use this to craft some pretty high item level gear. With just the Spark and some crafting materials, you can get item level 502 gear crafted for you very easily. With us getting a Spark every two weeks, that means you can get a new piece of 502 gear every two weeks as well. To get your gear crafted, all you have to do is pop on over to the crafting order clerks in Valdraken, find the item that you want crafted, collect all of the materials, plug in your spark, and find someone to craft it. I always send personal or guild orders to guarantee the rank 4 or 5 craft. Rank 5 is the item level 502, so as long as you're getting someone good to craft your gear, you should be able to get some very easy upgrades using your Sparks of Awakening. Personally, I would recommend you don't craft any item that you can buy from a bullion vendor, so don't craft weapons, rings, or trinkets. More about this in just a moment. I would also avoid tier set gear slots, which would be head, shoulder, chest, hands, and legs, until you have your four set fully equipped. So the best slots to craft first would probably be your necklace, wrists, boots, and belt. I would focus on your lowest item level slots after that. Now perhaps the most important source of gear in Season 4 comes from the antique bronze bullion vendors. In the Parting Glass Inn in Valdraken you can find several vendors who sell 493 raid gear for a special new currency, the antique bronze bullion. You can buy weapons, rings, trinkets, and very rare items from all three Dragonflight raids, so some of the most powerful gear in the game is available for you to just straight up buy. All of this gear also comes with a special Awakened track, allowing you to upgrade it 12 or 14 times depending on the item. That lets you take the gear up to item level 535, but we won't be able to get that high in this video due to the Aspect Crest requirements. You can still get up to 515 item level here with Drake and Worm Crest though, which is achievable for us in this video. You can get one bronze bullion per week, and that cap is cumulative, so because we're in week two, the max you can get is two, but that also means that if you didn't get one last week, you can get two this week instead of just one. If you don't get any until next week, you'll be able to get all three in a single week. If you keep up with the bronze bullions, you'll be getting one per week, which means you can buy a new piece of gear every two weeks. Now sadly, there is only one way to get your hands on this new currency, by killing raid bosses. Thankfully, there is an option here that is available to everyone looking for raid. Just like Heroic Dungeon Qs, LFR is technically not solo content, but it's close enough in my eyes. You don't have to set up a group or pay attention to any part of the grouping process, you just queue up by yourself, wait for the queue time, and hop in. You don't have to interact with anyone, just press your buttons and hope for some loot. 
in the case of the Boolean currency, you're going to get it as long as you kill a few raid bosses in a week, so that's a guaranteed reward as well. Looking for raid bosses have been very easy to clear through, I don't think I've wiped a single time during Season 4. It probably helps that everyone up to this point has seen all of the bosses as well, because we're just redoing the same three raids, so a lot of folks already know how the fights go, making it even easier than previous seasons. The antique bronze bullion currency is more than enough reason to hop into LFR during Season 4, but you also have a chance to get 480 loot from each boss, including the rare items and trinkets, as well as tier set gear, so LFR should definitely be on your to-do list. Now the final leg of this gearing up journey is to grab some worm crests. These will allow you to upgrade your boolean gear further, upgrade any higher item level gear you happen to get your hands on, and also allow you to upgrade your spark crafted gear. Upgrading your normal gear is the exact same as any other upgrades, just take it to an upgrade vendor, fork over your worm crests and flight stones, and reap those higher item level rewards. Worm crests can get your gear up to 515, past that point you're going to need aspect crests, which you can't really get your hands on as a casual player. Upgrading your crafted gear is a little different, you'll need to get a different enchanted awakened crest, this time we're looking at the enchanted worm awakened crest. These are made by enchanters just like the other ones, so you can make it yourself if you're an enchanter with a recipe, or you can get them crafted for you at the crafting order clerk. The nascent worm crests are purchased from the enchanting supply vendor, that's where we spend our worm crests. It's going to cost 45 crests per nascent crest, which means it will cost you 45 worm crests to upgrade a piece of crafted gear to item level 515. The rest of the materials can be bought on the auction house. When you have your crest, just pop back to the crafting order clerk, start a recrafting order at the top left there, pop your piece of gear in and add the enchanted crest. Send it back to whoever crafted it for you the first time, or find a new crafter in trade if you prefer, and as long as you get it crafted at rank 5, that is an easy piece of item level 515 gear. You can do this with every piece of crafted gear you get from the Sparks of Awakening crafting process, so eventually you could end up with a full set of crafted gear if you're not working on any other progression path. Between the bullying gear, and the new higher item level crafted gear you can get up to item level 515 without doing any difficult group content. But all of this relies on worm crests. How can we get worm crests without having to do the raid on heroic or doing mythic plus keystones? It's actually very simple, we're going to use the weekly vault. The weekly vault offers you an extra chance to get some gear upgrades, but what a lot of folks skip over is the currency you can pick up as well. If none of your rewards are an upgrade, you can take the tokens of merit instead. You can get up to 6 tokens per week by having 3 rewards unlocked in your vault. Earning credit for the weekly vault is super easy in Season 4. If you're doing LFR, that's going to unlock at least a few rewards on the raid row, and then you can do heroic dungeons to grab one or two rewards on the dungeon row. Between heroic dungeon queues and LFR, you should be able to unlock three rewards very quickly. Now I will be very interested to see how the vault evolves in the War Within expansion because the PvP row is being removed and we'll be getting an open world content row instead. So in the War Within you will get credit for things like open world events and delves, making gearing up as a solo player even easier. But for now in Dragonfly, all you need to do is get some tokens, and then take those tokens to the vendor right next to the vault, and you can buy Worm Crests. 6 tokens per week will yield 45 crests per week, that's one piece of upgraded crafted gear, or 3 upgrades for a piece of champion, hero, or awakened gear that needs Worm Crests. It's up to you where you want to spend your crests, but we can currently get one piece of crafted gear every 2 weeks, and one piece of bullion or awakened gear every 2 weeks as well. Those rewards are also conveniently offset, so if you're taking advantage of both of those progression paths, you can get a new piece of high item level gear every single week. One from your crafting sparks, and then one from the bullion vendor. That will continue until you run out of things to buy from the bullion vendor, or you run out of gear slots for your crafted gear. Using the weekly vault for worm crests is a little slow, but it is also very reliable. Season 4 is going to run until either the War Within pre-patch or until the expansion itself launches, so we have plenty of time to get geared up. It's also much easier to gear up multiple characters if you want to, because the big upgrades here are quite time-gated. So you get your splintered spark and your bullion for the week, unlock your weekly vault rewards for those worm crests, and that's kind of all you need to do to maximize your gearing gains for the week, then you can just move on to another character if you wish. But that's how you can get item level 515 without doing any difficult group content, so it's quite easy to gear up as a solo or casual player in Season 4 of Dragonflight. How are you going to gear up in Season 4? Are you working on getting multiple characters all geared up, or are you more excited about some other content coming our way in 1027? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. 
A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you'd like to add your name to the end of every video with a special shout out at the start of the next video, you can find the links in the description over to Patreon or click the join button just below this video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.